everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's Kavita webinar. We're coming to you live on August 13th. For any NLC webinar first timers here today who don't know, our Kavita webinars get their name from the Creek word for learning. Today you're going to learn how to use video in your small business or nonprofit from Russ Siegel, who's the executive director of a native CDFI called the Sequoia Fund. My name is Brooke Warrington. I'm the training and development specialist here at the Native Learning Center. We're also thrilled that you could join us today. If you can follow along as I read the disclaimer aloud, this webinar provides a summary of fundamental concepts, requirements, and or procedures within the allotted 90 minutes. The material discussed does not illustrate all possible scenarios that could be applicable. We also have our copyright infringement law pictured here. So just a friendly reminder that all the webinar materials are protected by copyright, trademark, trade secret, and other intellectual property laws. Before we get going, we want you to know how to interact during today's presentation. If you look to the top of your screen, you'll see an icon of a hand with a plus sign. If you click on that icon, you could either raise your hand, you could agree, disagree, show applause, show laughter, or even signal requests, like asking the instructor to speak louder or to slow down, please. And now your graphic should look, or I'm sorry, your screen should look similar to this graphic here. If you look down to the bottom left, we have the files pod available. There is um, a copy of today's slides available for download. If you just hover over it and click on that down arrow, it'll download and save it onto your um, device's download section. Um, next over to the right is the web links pod. Here you can find a link to today's webinar feedback survey. Um, you could subscribe to the NLC emailing list and receive our weekly newsletter so that you can stay in the know about our trainings. You could connect with the Native Learning Center on LinkedIn. And there's also a link to download the Adobe Connect app all the way at the bottom. And then finally, all the way to the right, we have the chat pod available. This is how you can communicate with both the instructor as well as the NLC staff. We do encourage uh, class participation during the presentation. So if you have any comments or questions, just go down and click that box that says type here, type in the message you wanna send and you can either hit enter or click on that up arrow button icon to submit. If you're having any tech support problems, you could submit to that to the chat and I can try to help you navigate as best as possible. Know that most tech support problems can be solved by just exiting and re-entering the meeting room. <laughs> All right, folks, let's all go ahead and get the chat box going together. Uh, let us know your name, where you're joining us from, your tribal affiliation, and your work or your role in Indian country. And while you guys are getting the chat box going, it is with great pleasure that I introduce today's webinar instructor, Russ Siegel. Russ, I'm going to hand it off to you now. Thank you so much, Brooke. Welcome, everybody. Uh, good morning, wherever you are. Good afternoon, wherever you are. I uh, know that we've got a lot of folks joining us from a lot of different places. So, yes, uh, as Brooke uh, requested, please let us know where you're from and and uh, where you're joining us from and what you do. Uh, this is a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun today. And and I'm going to encourage you very first thing, go down in that files section on the bottom left, download the slide deck. You have a PDF that you can open on any computer. These are going to be very content rich slides. Not a lot of fluff today. So these are going to be things that you can refer back to. I want you to be able to use these slides. I want you to be able to use the content that we provide for you today so that you can use video uh, and, and get the most out of it. So let's see here. We got, uh, okay, great. Uh, Small Business Assistance Center in Tahlequah. Uh, fantastic. Um, Gulf Coast, Pensacola, fantastic! Thanks for joining us. All right, so as you uh, as you think about doing that and just letting us know what you got going on there and where you are, please do pop those questions and comments in the chat as we go, because as Jerry Reed sang in the theme song to Smoking the Bandit, we got a long way to go and a short time to get there. So let's jump right in. As the executive director of Sequoia Fund. As a little background, how we got into video, this little thing you might have heard about in the news, I don't know, it was mentioned a couple of times, it might have passed right by you, this little thing that um, uh, was called COVID, back in uh, 2020, uh, this thing came around and as a, a native CDFI, we were flooded with information from the Small Business Administration, from the U.S. Treasury 
from all kinds of federal agencies, uh, from state agencies that that overlapped the Kuala boundary here in Cherokee, uh, from tribal entities and tribal departments, and and it was it was our job to get this information out to our small businesses. Over the last twenty six or twenty seven years, Sequoia Fund has become the go to for small business information. People turn to us all the time to find out what's going on in the small business world. And it was no different during COVID. So we started sending out emails. We would just get these emails from agencies and departments and we would forward these things out. The next day we would get a flood of calls, emails, asking questions that had people only read the email the day before, they would have gotten all those answers. And then it struck us, people don't read emails. People don't read. And I'm going to talk about why people don't read in just a moment. But people weren't reading. And we realized that we needed to disseminate this information in a different way. So we started summarizing all of these emails, all of this information, pulling this together and creating what we would call talking head videos. And, and this is what you see right here on the slide. This is an example of what you would see in a talking head video. There are several components there. Obviously, you see the talking head. That's me with a little less gray in, in the beard. Um, I'm against a blue background, and we're going to talk about backgrounds and why it's important to have boring backgrounds. Uh, but you also see some information there about me up in the, up in the right-hand corner. and the little bar across the bottom, right under my chin, that's something called a lower third. A lower third is what you see a lot of times on the news. If it's moving across the, the bottom of the news screen, that's called a chiron, a C-H-I-R-O-N. Uh, but we weren't that fancy. We didn't need a chiron. We just needed to put some information down there to let people know who we were, who's doing the talking so that they would know whether they should trust us or not. Well, funny thing happened. We started putting out these videos and people started watching them. We realized that they were getting the information they needed. We were doing a good thing. We were doing uh, exactly what, what people needed us to be doing. And it took us a lot of time to make these videos. 14 or 15 years ago, we got a grant from the Small Business Administration to install a video and stu uh, video and, and photo studio in our office. And we put lights and we put backdrops and we've got teleprompters and everything. But of course, during COVID, we couldn't go to the office. We couldn't be together. So I turned a spare bedroom of my home into a studio. And that's where a lot of our videos were created, was right there in my youngest daughter's former bedroom. But you don't have to get fancy. You don't have to have the big studio that we built at Sequoia Fund to look good on video and to, to get a lot of views. So today, we're going to cover why you should be using video. Yes, it does take time to create. It takes time to edit. But the results can be phenomenal. We'll talk about the different ways you can use video. I'm not all about wasting time. I'm not about wasting energy, if you can repurpose something from written format to video format, from video format to written format, or or anything like that, uh, we're going to talk about different ways to repurpose your content so that it reaches more people. We'll talk about the principles of effective video. You can do video and not be very effective at all. But there's some very simple principles that you can follow to get the most out of this medium. I'll talk to you about a sample video production format. One of the questions that we always got was, how do I have time to do this? How am I going to work this into everything else I have going on? Well, I'm going to give you a very simple format for doing that. How do we get our videos seen? Oh, that's the big one, right? You can make videos all day, but if nobody sees them, are they really effective? Are they really good? How do we look good on camera? Folks, take a look at the right hand, top right hand corner of your screen. You will see a face made for radio. 
the voice is I don't know what the voice is. This 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 voice in this LA accent. Yes, it's an LA accent, lower Appalachia. Uh this this face is made for radio. So why in the world would this face and this accent be doing video? Well, you don't have to be Tom Hanks to be a great actor. You don't have to you don't have to have great looks or a great voice to make great video. We're going to talk about how to shoot inexpensive but engaging video. And the funny thing here, the, the less expensive your videos, the more engaging they can be. You don't have to be Steven Spielberg out there producing multi-million dollar content. How do you brand your videos? Well, you saw on this Talking Head video, we put our logo on there. We put our logo on everything. We're going to talk about how to brand your videos so that people know, even before they watch the video, who it is and what it's all about. And finally, I'm going to talk to you about how to create a dynamite studio on a firecracker budget. We're going to give you some tools that we use at Sequoia Fund. Some we no longer use because we just no longer need them, but we still love them. I'm going to turn you on to all of those things so that you have some very inexpensive but highly effective tools at your disposal to help you make videos in uh, an effective and easy way. Okay, but first, why video? Well, our brains are wired for video. Why? Because the human brain is wired for stories. Throughout the whole of human history, we have passed down stories. Our, our history, our family history, our cultural history, what happened yesterday, what we ate for lunch, these are all passed down through stories. And people hate to listen to data. We hate to listen to statistics. We hate to listen to boring information. But we love a good story. Think about this. If you've ever been to a conference, and I know that we all go to all kinds of different conferences, you're going to sit there and you're going to listen to people who read data off of a screen. They're going to pop up a slide and they're going to read that slide word for word. It's going to be tons of graphs and data. And when it's all over, you hope someone will wake you up so you can go to the next session. But if you've been to a conference where you've been just bombarded with data and graphs and charts and statistics and, and boring information, and then you walk into a session where someone tells you a story, they start with a story, they throw in some data, they pepper it with some statistics, they finish with another story, wow. Those are the sessions you remember. Those are the sessions that energize you. Those are the sessions that make you glad you came, not the ones where people just sit and read data off of a slide. There are more ways than ever to consume video. We have phones. In fact, there are more people now watching video on Facebook on their phone than are watching television worldwide. So we have a lot of, you can, you can consume video on your iPad, on your computer. You can consume video in the airport, in an elevator. It really doesn't matter. People can watch video anywhere. In fact, a recent study showed that 72% of respondents admitted to watching video in a public toilet. So if you're wondering why the bathroom is always occupied, folks, it's because someone's sitting in there watching videos. Go ahead and bang on that door. Get them to move. Don't be shy. People are watching video anywhere and everywhere. Video is also great for CTA or a call to action and for sales. Now, Sequoia Fund is a nonprofit. We are a CDFI, which means we lend money to native borrowers who can't get money at banks don't or just don't qualify for money at banks. We help businesses start up. We help businesses expand. We do consumer loans. And while we're not, quote unquote, selling anything, we are always selling because we have to convince people that we are a better option than a payday lender or even sometimes a bank. 
Selling is not pushing things on people that they don't want. Selling is helping people purchase or engage in those things that they do want. And if you're a nonprofit, uh, sometimes I'll you you might hear me use the term for cause organization. Um, you know, for profit and for cause organizations, we all do the same thing. A call to action is all about getting someone to do something. Now, that might be to apply for a loan. It might be to apply for tribal services. It might be to donate. It might be to show up at a fundraiser. It might be to show up and volunteer at a community event. Whatever that call to action is, video is perfect. And because it is face-to-face -face communication, it is one person looking at a camera talking to one other person it's establishing relationships. And so no other medium does a better job at establishing relationships. Think about newscasters who you've watched for years. And when that newscaster finally retires, or maybe it's a, a weather person on television, that, that person finally retires, or a sportscaster who you love, don't you feel a little sense of loss when they retire? When now you're, somebody else is going to be bringing the weather? Somebody else is going to be telling you the results of the games last night. You do feel a little bit of a loss because you have established a relationship with that person over the years. It's no different from uh, YouTube videos or even social media videos. Once people start to trust you, know you, seek you out, they'll stop what they're doing and watch your videos. They have a relationship with you. So let's talk about the, the big kid on the block, YouTube. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. Don't wait until later on. We could talk about this in a later segment. But the reason I want to talk about this right now is because one of the questions we always have is, is how do I host my videos? You can't really host videos on your own website. It just eats up a lot of space, it eats up a lot of storage space. And that gets very, very expensive. And YouTube is a wonderful repository for data, uh, for, for videos, for anything you want to put out there. And it's a great repository for responses. And, and we'll talk a little bit about how, how video is, is social and YouTube is social. Sometimes we just think of it as a, as a one-way street. We're going to go there and we're going to watch the videos and we're going to move on. But it really can be very social. YouTube has a bigger audience than television ads. When people watch YouTube, they're they're watching ads, and and you know sometimes we can skip those ads. It's a little bit harder, a little bit harder to skip those ads these days. But sometimes the content creator will sneak up on us, and they will put an ad right into their video. This is called an inline ad, and that inline ad is just where they're talking about, you know, uh, and 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 uh, I was I was just walking through that neighborhood and I didn't feel really secure and that's why my home is secured by ADT security. They'll do those kinds of things and all of a sudden you realize, wait a minute, I'm 10 seconds into an ad that I can't skip. But but the target market, the target audience is there. You can target who you want to see your video through YouTube. It helps people make purchase decisions. Think about some of the things that you've bought. Maybe you went to YouTube to look at a review. Maybe you wanted to see some product comparisons. Maybe you wanted to watch one of those unboxing videos just to see how are things going to come out of this box so that I'll know exactly what to do with it once I, once I get it and I'm ready to set it up. Um, how do I troubleshoot something? Is this, is this product easier to troubleshoot than another product? It's going to help us make decisions. And that number, that 68% is now old. As of yesterday, and I should have changed this number, uh, my apologies, that number is now 73%. So we've gone up 5%. 73% of us use YouTube to make decisions. It is the second largest search engine. It's right behind Google in terms of search power. And guess who owns YouTube? <laughs> Google. So when you search for something in Google and you need a video, it's obviously going to give you YouTube choices. It's not going to send you to some obscure video site. It's going to send you to their own owned content. On YouTube, it gives us an opportunity to show and engage, not just show and tell. 
because it is social. Uh, video is is something that we can use to you can you can do follow up videos. Um, you can do all kinds of different things. You can you can modify a video. You can you can even put a commentary out there where you show an older video that you've created and you can comment on it and you can do a little follow up. And that that virtually doubles the engagement there. But it, it allows people then to comment. You can you can put boxes in your video where you can point to a box and people can click on that box and click on a link and go to another video that gives them similar information or something supplemental. This is this is something that television has never been able to do and will never be able to do. So it is very social, it's very versatile, and we want to engage people with it. We don't want to just throw the content out there, which is really what we were doing during COVID. We were just show and tell. We were throwing the, the content out there, you know, hoping people vacuumed up what they could, get what they could out of it. Um uh, because the next day was just going to be another content rich day where we told people, here's the next thing that you should be looking for. Here's the next government relief that's coming out and so forth. YouTube is powerful and, exp and inexpensive. It doesn't cost you anything to upload videos to YouTube and you have everything you need. If you have a, a smartphone, you have a YouTube studio, you can create videos and upload them. You can edit them on your phone and upload them to YouTube. YouTube right now is, in my opinion, the best way to build a brand, whether you're building the brand of your organization, your, your agency, your tribe, or yourself. It's a great way to build a brand. If you, if you look at people who have uh, Instagram accounts, TikTok accounts, all roads lead right back to YouTube, a lot of these videos that they create on other platforms wind up on YouTube because it is just the biggest kid on the block and it's too big to ignore. So now that we've got that out of the way, we're all going to use YouTube, whether you love YouTube or hate YouTube or just think YouTube is okay, you need to be on YouTube. Um, you need to create a YouTube profile uh, for your organization. But what are the different uses of video? How can we do things a little bit differently and maximize our use of video? Well, you can create what's called a how-to video. Again, how do you set this up? How do you put this lawnmower together? How do you apply for this assistance? How do you take advantage of this tribal program? How do you use this new portal on the tribal website? How do you do anything? How-to videos are huge. You can do talking head videos or explainer videos. This is, this again, this is what we did. This is what you saw the little screenshot of. That was just a talking head video of me reading a teleprompter, giving out some information. An explainer video is going to tell you how to do something. This is, this is a new process for... Uh, urgent care intake, or this is a new process for uh, how we're going to help people get their taxes done, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we can also do interviews. And we did a few interviews uh, with some folks who, uh, we did two types of interviews. One was we would, we would sit down with the small business administration, or we would sit down with the treasury or somebody else who, who was there to help small businesses during this pandemic. They would kind of walk us through some initiatives and some things and answer some questions, and those were very valuable. But we also did something else. We, businesses were still open. Uh, we had businesses that couldn't be open, hair salons, uh, gift shops, tourist-oriented businesses. They couldn't be open. So we said, why don't we show them some love? Why don't we start doing some interviews with these businesses? Let them have a chance to talk about their business and uh, let people know what they're doing during the pandemic so that when they, uh, when they start coming back to town, when they start shopping again, they'll, they'll realize, hey, this place is open. I can, I can shop there. And they've got some really cool stuff that I want to go check out. And we did that for a lot of businesses. We did that for hair salons, gift shops. We did that for uh, attractions, restaurants, uh, gyms, 
you know, places where people could go work out. And, and uh, we even turned them on to video as well. They started doing some in-home yoga classes, stretching classes, uh, and some uh, body weight fitness that people could stay engaged with the fitness center without having to go to the fitness center. And they just were able to take these mini classes on, on uh, uh, YouTube and, and Facebook. You can make announcements. Sometimes it's, it's okay just to say, hey, we're dropping our new album this Friday night. Uh, be the first to get it. An announcement uh, is just a real simple you could do a 30 second or a one minute announcement. Uh, doesn't have to be very high tech. Um, or a welcome. Hey, we, we'd like to, uh, we'd like to welcome a new employee. <clears throat> we want you all to, to join us in, in welcoming our, our new uh, receptionist or our new doctor or our new engineer, or it may be some, somebody that the public may never really interact with, you know, uh, We'd like to welcome our new sous chef. Uh, this is the person who's going to be making everything taste great for you back in the kitchen. Uh, Jeff, say hey uh, to everybody. Just do a little quick welcome. Tell them about yourself, Jeff. Those kinds of things. Um, those are powerful. Believe it or not, people watch that stuff. Invitations. If you've got a uh, if you've got an event coming up, a video is much better than just sending out a static invitation or calendar invite. A little video can go a long way to getting people involved. Some different types of videos, and you've probably watched some of these. You can do a chronicle video or what's called a serial video. Um, you can say, okay, this is, this is our office remodel. We're going to show you our office remodel. This is what happened this week in our office remodel. Uh, we're putting in this little conference room, and the public can come in and use this conference room. All you have to do is call us at this number. We'll, we'll schedule a time. For you and you can free of charge, you can come in and use our conference room. Next week it might be uh, this is what we're doing to the lobby area. Here's what happens in our brains, folks. We will not watch a 30 minute video on YouTube. Just not going to happen. I mean, you might get somebody who will skim through a 30 minute video, but to be able to sit and pay attention to a 30 minute video, that's not where our brains are these days. But if you break that up into 10 three-minute serial videos, people will watch every one of them. And just like podcasts, they'll say, well, I can't wait for the next segment to come out. Uh, builders have done this. We've got some local builders who are doing this, and they do this with remodels. They do this with brand new residential builds. And they'll say, that, you know, today we're going to work on uh, some footers that are on a steep slope. We're going to show you how that goes. They do that, and they'll they'll show you this three- to five-minute video, and then the, they'll say, okay, now join us on the next video when we're going to show you how this deck comes together. We're going to put this thing together, and, and uh, you're going to be really excited to see how this turns out. Again, it builds anticipation. Vlogs are video logs. You, you, you're familiar with blogs. Well, vlogs are, are just video chronicles. It's, it's somebody... Uh, uh, taping their lives or taping their day at work. Uh, you could do a vlog. You could do a travel log. Um, and and here's what here's what I'm getting at. Not everything you put out on your channel has to be about your operation. Not everything has to be business related. Um, The Eastern Band Chief, uh, Michelle Hicks, was standing out this morning greeting uh, kids. He and his entire administration were greeting all the kids at Cherokee Central Schools who were going back to school today. I am so glad I'm past that stage of my life, and I don't have to get kids to school anymore. But uh, they were standing out there. He and his wife and, and uh, the vice chief and uh, all their administration was just standing out there helping at the, at the drop-off line, at the school bus line, greeting parents, greeting kids. Uh, welcoming everybody in. Those are cool things. You don't have to be sitting down talking about budget discussions and, and tribal business. Sometimes people like to see the fun things too. So if you and your office are going to a conference, maybe you do a little travel log of that. Maybe you do some fun videos about here's what we did on our 
uh, at, at our conference. Here's where we went. Here's uh, here's all the, the things that we learned. Um, maybe we got stranded in the airport. This is what we did to pass the time. Folks, people are just interested in things, and, and they're hungry for interesting content. And if you make it fun, they'll watch. And if they're watching the things that have nothing to do with what you do on a daily basis, it will make them want to tune in when there's some serious you know, business-related content. Um, so don't be afraid to kind of go wild and do something a little bit out there. You can do an update to an older video, just like I mentioned before. You can you can actually show a video and you're commenting on it, or you show a clip of that video and you comment on the older video. Now, here's why this is so important. This, this is extremely important. A lot of people are tempted to take down older videos and replace them with newer versions. That's a big no-no on almost any platform, whether it is X, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, anything, no matter where you are. If you take down a video to replace it with something else, or if you take down a video because you're just not happy with it, it hurts your engagement. It it says to the algorithm, they're taking things down. Don't point as many people to them as before. So what you want to do is you can always go back and say, hey, we made a video yesterday that just didn't turn out great. The, the quality wasn't great. So this is an update to that video yesterday. If you want to see how bad we fumbled the ball, click here and you can go see just how bad it can be. But we're going to make up for it today. We're going to give you that same video, but it's going to be better today. Believe it or not, that is a much better solution than just reshooting the video. You can also do something called an opinion or contrarian video. Now, I want to be very careful here because opinions, and we are in a presidential election year, opinions can get dangerous. Just know that if you are on a tribal channel, if you're in an organizational channel, if it's on your business channel, that whatever you say is going to be associated with your organization. You might have to put out a disclaimer that, that my opinions do not reflect the opinions of our tribe or our organization. In fact, you might even have some policy language that governs that. So you want to check that and make sure that, you know, are you okay to say certain things? So, let me just caution you that before you get political on your video, and this could be national, local, tribal politics, it doesn't matter. Before you get political on a video, just understand that you have the potential to turn off 50% of the people who would otherwise listen to you. If that's a risk you're willing to take, if that's a hill you're willing to die on, start marching. But I caution against it. The opinions that I'm talking about sometimes are, you know, here's our opinion on what's going to happen with the economy. And we we do this some uh, because we listen to a lot of economic briefings. We get we we attend a lot of meetings and webinars and nobody has a crystal ball. But what we try to do is synthesize all of this information and then we can put out in our newsletter, we can put out in videos, we can just talk to people and say, you know, this is what you're hearing in the news. But this is our opinion. This is what we think is going to happen. Don't necessarily bank on it, but sometimes we're here to give you our opinion to tamp down some of the rhetoric and to, to help ease some fears. So our opinion is that because things have always tended to move in a positive direction and get better, that yes, it might get messy next week, but over the long haul, your stocks are going to be okay. Take a deep breath. Um, a contrarian video can be powerful because it goes against the grain. A contrarian video is where you say, hey, uh, this is the conventional wisdom out there, but but here's what we think. This is what we believe, or this is what I believe. And this is why I think that that information you're getting or that advice you're getting is dangerous. Now, there is a huge trend on YouTube right now of contrarian videos, and it's a beautiful thing to watch. There's been a lot of TikTok advice on how to do personal finance, how to invest, how to save money, how to manage your personal money. And what you're getting right now on YouTube is 
the YouTubers are professional financial advisors. They're watching these videos. They're commenting on these videos and they're correcting these videos. And they're saying, you know, maybe it's not the best thing to get your advice, your financial advice from a 22 year old who lives in a van down by the river. Right. So these contrarian videos can go a long way to getting people's attention and positioning you and your organization as the expert. Some more different uses of video. You can do reviews, evaluations, comparisons. And again, this does not have to be, this does not have to be directly related to what you do. You can get it, you can have a new office printer and you can do an you can do a review of your office printer. You can, you can look, I I found the coolest stapler in the world. It's not sexy. It's not flashy. It doesn't look great, but it's the coolest stapler in the world. It staples. Believe it or not, if I had done a review of that stapler and maybe compared it to a traditional old style stapler, we would have gotten some views. I'm kind of kicking myself right now for not thinking of that earlier, but you don't have to do, you know, the hot new sexy stuff. It could be, look, we just got new printers for our office and we want to show you how these compare to some of the older ones how it's saving us some money. And if we save money, we can, we can do a better job for you. We want to evaluate this new stapler because this is, this is just a cool thing that we thought that everybody should have. Yeah. We didn't, we're not being endorsed by this stapler company. We just, we bought this and we just think it's cool. You should know it, Look, anything. Yes. It sounds wild and crazy, but almost anything out there, you can do this type of video for and people actually like it. You can do new products, new services, customers, new employees. We we are we are in the process of getting ready to create a new series to highlight a lot of our loan recipients, people who have borrowed money to uh, rehabilitate their house, people who have borrowed money to start a business or expand a business, hire new people. Uh, we're 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 looking at putting together a new series about that. But if you offer a new service or a new product, or if there's something else that's coming out of your office, video is a great way to do that. If you want to highlight employees, hey, we're celebrating so-and-so's birthday today. Just want to show some love to this person. Uh, jump down in the in the comments, like and share this video. Uh, let let this new employee know that you you uh, you wish him a happy birthday, folks. Believe it or not, engagement is engagement is engagement, and what you gain on these non-topic related videos will build your attendance or your attention span on these other types of videos that have concrete information. FAQ videos, frequently asked questions. Hey, today we just want to let you know that, that one of the frequently asked questions we get is, that, do I have to apply for a loan online? Well, the short answer is no. We like for you to apply online because it saves you a trip to our office. You don't have to use any paper to do that. And the information you give us in that application goes directly into our computer system. So it saves us time. It helps us serve you faster. But the short answer is no, you don't have to fill that out online. If you're, if you're a pencil and paper person, we can send you a downloadable version. You can print that out and send it back to us. You can come by our office and pick one up. For your convenience, we even have a drop box in the lobby. So if we're not here or uh, if the rest of the building is closed, you can drop that application right there. Look, something that short, that simple, that informal, is huge. You can do favorites, uh, favorite video. You know, this is our favorite. Uh, this is our favorite place to eat lunch. This is our favorite day of the week. This is our favorite way to celebrate people's birthdays. This is our favorite way uh, to set up our filing system, which kind of leads into the how we work or the how I work. You could do a little series on this is how we get things done around here. Look, people love change. Yes. You heard that right. We love change. We love change. You'll hear it said sometimes that people don't like change. That's wrong. I'm going to be contrarian here for you for a second. People love change. You ever had a pair of jeans that didn't fit anymore and you went out and bought a new pair of jeans that fit? Oh, we love change. You ever found a shortcut to work? Yep, we love change. You found a new way to buy something or do something that saved you money or time? Yep, that's a change too. We love change. You had a kid in the house, you had to drive them to ball practice, and now they've got a driver's license and they can take themselves. Woo! We love change. What we don't love 
is uncertainty. We don't love uncertainty. And one of the things that people don't love about organizations with which they do business is they don't understand how we work. They don't understand, why do I have to do this? Why do you have to do that? Why does it take so long to do this? Well, if we put out a really quick little how we work or how this process works or how we get things done video and explain to people, we are taking away the uncertainty. And if we take away the uncertainty, then we don't, then, then as, as, a, as a customer of yours, I'm not going to mind as much. I'm not going to mind waiting as much because now I know what you're doing. You're not just sitting around doing nothing. Right. I understand how you work. We also. We can do live events. Uh, boy, last week uh, was the annual trout derby in Cherokee. Uh, you had hundreds and hundreds of kids and, and their parents. So there were thousands of people in the Oconalefti River fishing. Uh, you had hundreds of uh, tribal members and volunteers uh, that were that were uh, helping kids bait hooks. They were weighing fish. They were handing out prizes. They were registering people. They were doing all kinds of things. They were feeding people. It was a huge endeavor. What better event to video? You video the live event. You live stream it, and you let people know who maybe maybe I'm uh, maybe I broke my leg and I can't get there to see my grandchild fish. I really wanted to be in that river with my grandchild, but I can't do that. So now I can watch this at home. I can watch all these kids have fun. Huge way to use video and screen captures. I'm going to give you some tools very, very shortly that will allow you to be videoing without having to be on screen. You don't ever have to show your face to do this. So there's no reason to reinvent the wheel when you're when you're doing video, you've probably got a lot of content that you could use. We can repurpose content from blog posts, from speeches, from articles. Maybe you had a podcast interview. Uh, and in fact, we uh, uh, one of my board members, who is also a client of ours, we were we did a podcast interview together a couple of weeks ago. And we're thinking about how do we expand that? We had so much fun together. How do we expand that? And, and turn that microphone around to a lot of our businesses uh, in Cherokee who, who need some airtime and, and need to be recognized. And so um, we could take those, those interviews, we could, we could take snippets of those, we could post those in the local newspaper in the, in the Cherokee One Feather. You see, it goes both ways. You can take video and turn it into something else. If you've offered a training course, if you offer Indianpreneurship or uh, building native communities or anything else that you're doing for your community, you could turn that into very brief little videos, put that content out there. It gives people another way to take that in and digest it. You could use information from your social posts or your or the commentaries on your social posts. You could turn those into videos. You could get a lot of questions on a on a Facebook post. This is wait a minute, maybe maybe we need to talk about this a little bit more. And you create a video for that. If you have an email promotion, you're trying to send something out, you're trying to invite people to an event, um, to that live event, look, use video. Or if you've had uh, video from the live event, you can use the still shots from that live event to advertise next year's live event. All kinds of different ways to do this. But I want to give you some very simple principles for how you can do effective video. Now, we could talk all day about where to put your videos and what kind of videos to do, but I think when we get right down to the nitty gritty, I want to give you some ways that you can create videos, and I want you to get started right now because it's it's not that hard. In fact, simpler is better. That's the first principle of effective video. Simpler is better. Simple is is huge. One of the first video icons out there on YouTube was a guy who created, uh, he built model airplanes and he would build these model airplanes. He would put them together in these kits and he would put them on a bicycle and he'd drive them around his city and he'd deliver these model airplanes. And he was using chat rooms back in the day, back uh, AOL chat rooms. He, he was using uh, all of the available tools that he had. But his wife came across this little thing called YouTube. 
and she brought it to his attention. She said, I think if you would, if you would use YouTube to show how you build these model airplanes, I think your sales would go up. And he said, I don't have time for that. I just, I, I don't have time. I'm too busy. I don't have time for that. Uh, I, I don't have time to make video, edit video, all that junk. Not going to do it. So as he was putting these kits together, she was videoing him. She just kind of, you know, secretly videoed him doing all the things to put these. And what it was doing was it was saying to the people who are buying these, look how much care goes into packaging these. Look how much care goes into putting these together and these hand-built kits. These are, these are awesome. So she created a YouTube account for him. And all of a sudden his sales went wild. And it wasn't just people buying from him in his city. It was people buying from him all over the world. So now he had a new problem. Instead of having time to make videos, he needed to create time to hire someone who could handle his shipping, who could handle all of his packaging, and, and who could do that. And uh, as he started making more videos, he got more and more popular. The more videos, the more popular. And it was just him and a, and a little handheld video camera. Well, he got, as we say in my neck of the woods, too big for his britches. And as he started making more crafted videos, more high production value videos, he started to lose video viewers. People were not as interested. They wanted that simple, raw, here's your handheld camera. This is you talking into the video. They wanted that simple video. So high production value is not necessary. In fact, he proved that it can be detrimental. Good video is good, and people will give you some slack if they don't see great video. But if you don't have great audio, you will lose people. So if you're going to have, if you've got a hundred bucks to spend on a camera and a microphone, spend 10 bucks on the camera and spend 90 bucks on the microphone. You can get away with a lot with a, your, your video capability on your on your smartphone. You can get away with a lot with an old handheld VHS camera, but people are not going to sit around waiting for good audio. You've got to have that. When you create video, you want to create what's called evergreen video. Evergreen just means that it always stays relevant, no matter how long ago it was produced. And I'll give you an example. We don't want to start a video with, wow, did you see the Super Bowl game yesterday, man? And then I'm going to talk about the teams. We're going to talk about maybe that baseball game that was, that was on. we're going to talk about the 2024 Olympics. Now, if it's relevant to the 2024 Olympics, great. But if it's not, we don't want to mention it. Because here's what's going to happen. Somebody's going to log in. They're going to see, oh, that title, that thumbnail, everything fits. This is exactly the video I need. And they're going to see this video in the first 10 seconds. You're talking about the 2024 Olympics. But hey, wait a minute. It's 2028. This video is no good anymore. Yes, maybe everything in that video is exactly what they need to hear. But they turn it off because they believe it is dated. They believe it is old. So you want to create evergreen. You just want to leave the dated current event stuff out of it. You do need a relevant thumbnail and title. Now, I'm going to leave you here to your own devices. We could spend another hour talking about thumbnails and titles, but what I'm going to encourage you to do is just go to YouTube, and I want you to look up some videos on how to create effective thumbnails and effective titles. There are tons of them out there. Get the ones that have the most views, which are going to pop right up at the top. Watch some of those. It's going to be a great primer on why your thumbnail, that little tiny picture, is so important. To save time, energy, frustration, try doing everything in one take. Do it as if it's live TV. See if you can knock it out in one take, because the more times you try to reshoot things, the more frustrated you're going to get, the more time you're going to spend. It's not going to be fun, and it's going to show up on your face. So try to do everything you can in one take. The shorter, the better. Uh, make sure you have adequate and appropriate lighting. I'm going to talk about lighting very specifically here in just a moment, but I want you to I want you to realize that that if people can't see you, uh, they're not going to feel like they hear you as well. They're going to turn the volume way up because they can't see you. Do, do, do script out what you're going to say. 
Do not just wing it. Go ahead and script it out. And practice looking into the camera. You have a camera in your pocket. Maybe it's on your desk. Maybe it's on the table beside you in front of you. Grab that camera. And I want you to practice walking around your house, making videos of yourself. Just hold that camera out there. Do selfie videos. Talk to the camera. Talk to the camera about cleaning the bathroom. I'm going to go clean the bathroom now. I hope I have enough cleaning supplies in the bathroom. Because if I don't have enough cleaning supplies in the bathroom, I've got to go to the other room of the house. Look into the camera. What you want to do is you're never going to show these videos to anyone. You're never going to show them to anyone. But you're going to watch them yourself and make sure that you're looking at the camera, not at yourself. Practice looking at the camera. Very important. And be you. Be you. Don't try to be, um, you know, don't try to have a, a different voice, like a like a, a radio announcer voice. Don't try to, don't try to be someone you're not. Don't try to be an actor. Just be you. You do want to try to keep your video, as I mentioned before, between three and five minutes. Beyond three to five minutes, man, beyond five minutes, our attention span starts to go, it goes away. Three minutes is about really the ideal. Um, that's the modern attention span. Sorry, folks, I don't make the rules, but here we are. You don't have to include everything. If you want to make a long video that tells lots and lots of information, consider breaking it up into one to three minute bites. Put those videos out at different times. You do not have to tell everything and include everything in one video. This is why we had Back to the Future 2 and Back to the Future 3. Back to the Future 1 was perfect, but there was more story to tell. Godfather 3, there was no need for that. That's a, that's a topic for a different day. But you don't have to tell everything in one video. So how do you create the time? How do you have the time? How do you make the time to get this done? Well, I'm going to show you a very simple uh, format for producing your video, and I'm going to talk about what goes into that production. So let's start on the left side of this slide. Number one, you want a hook or a headline. The headline for your video is that title. That's what you want to watch those YouTube videos for. You want to learn how to make titles that catch people's eye that tell some information, and that are relevant to the, um, the algorithm so that you actually do show up in the search when people are looking for you. That matters. You want to brand your video. You want to have a consistent look. You want to have a consistent background. You want to wear the same shirt or the same hat every single time. You want to have the same font on your, your background or on your lower third or wherever it is. You want to have a very consistent look. Color scheme. Uh, Sequoia Fund has the same color scheme in almost everything we do. Uh, and it's taken, it's, it's taken from our logo. Uh, and that color scheme just lets you know immediately when you look at that video, hey, I'm, I'm getting ready to watch a, a Sequoia Fund video. Uh, you need an introduction. Now, careful here. We've all wanted the recipe, right? You want the recipe. You're dying for the recipe. You go to the video to watch the recipe, to watch how it's made, and you get 30 minutes of, well, this was my grandma's favorite. And because my grandmother was born in 1926, and my grandmother did, and you get 30 minutes of, of grandma history, look, a short introduction is all you need. Today, we're going to be talking about how to make grandma's famous rhubarb pie. Uh, yes, this is my grandma's actual recipe. I'm going to make it just exactly the way she made it. It's not going to taste as good because it never will, but here we go. Boom. That's all you need. Not a long, wordy introduction. You need three to five minutes of body content. This is the, this is the meaty stuff, and then you need a very quick call to action at the end of the video. The call to action is make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Click on the bell. That way we notify you every time a new video comes out. You don't have to miss anything. Or if it's going to be used on some other platform, we need volunteers. By Friday, I want you to go to this website and sign up to be a volunteer for this event. Uh, the volunteer window closes at 5 p.m. on Friday. Uh, make sure you get in. All volunteers are going to get a T-shirt and a welcome package. We're going to give you some training, and we don't want to, want to, we don't want you to miss out on this exciting event. A call to action just says, please do something. 
And then you'll see an end card. Now, a lot, a lot of videos are doing end cards these days, and it's sort of disappointing. An end card is just something that flashes up at the very end of the video that has some pertinent information. Yes, on YouTube, on YouTube, what's going to happen is you're going to get six or a hundred other videos that pop up on that screen because they want you to click on something else. They're, they want you to get addicted and move on to the next thing. But if your end card is there, they can backtrack that thing for a couple of seconds and get all that information. You want, you know, website uh, URL. You want different social media platforms where the people could get to you. And all, everything on your end card can be in the in the uh, uh, description section underneath your video. It should be. Uh, you should give people lots of information, lots of links down in that. But the end card lets people know this is the end of my video. So if it automatically, if they've got that autoplay turned on and it goes to a video that has nothing to do with you, they don't get confused that, wow, is that, am I watching the same video? Put that end card in there and give it a couple of seconds of silence before you end your video. And that way people know, hey, this is this is the end. This is really it. Now let's take a look at the right-hand side of this slide for a second. This is a typical content calendar, and we want to do things as far out in advance as you can. Uh, Pat Sajak just announced his retirement uh, not too long ago from Wheel of Fortune. But he's going to be on TV for a while because they shoot these things, and they shoot all day on Monday. Mm -hmm. So they shoot an entire week's worth of stuff on Monday. Uh, so they they've got a couple of different you know a couple of months of of uh, shows with Pat Sajak. So uh, we'll see Pat Sajak for a while. That gives them time to to look for his replacement and um, shoot some new videos. Plus, if you shoot in advance as much as you can, it takes the stress off of you. So. We're going to, we're going to, and, and again, you can pick whatever days of the week you want. Whatever day of the week you want is, is cool. That's up to you. But on Tuesday, I'm going to carve out time to write some scripts. We're going to, we're going to write down what we want to talk about. We're going to create these video scripts. And I might have five or six, maybe 10 different scripts. I'm going to pick one Friday a month and that's going to be shoot day. I'm not, I'm not worried about answering the phone that day. I'm not going to take walk-in customers that day. I'm not going to think about anything else that day except shooting these videos, getting through these videos. Now, you can shoot those videos and you can you can actually uh, you can edit those videos uh, on the same day or, or maybe the next Monday, but you're going to have a release day. So that you're going to release, uh, you know, on ours, it's going to be, we're going to release every Monday or we're going to release every Thursday. Whatever that release day is, you want something to come out that day every week because people will start to expect it. But this way, you've got a consistent release date. You're drip feeding that content out to your audience, but you are actually creating it all in about two days, writing one day, shooting and editing the next day. So how do we look good on camera? Again, this is a face made for radio. But there are three things to take into consideration. And, and kudos to you if you can go into the extra points if you go into the chat section and tell me uh, who this is and what episode this is from. Uh, Cause by the time I go to the next slide, I will, I will tell you it's one of my favorite episodes uh, of one of my favorite TV episodes of all time. But how do we look good on camera? We got to remember the three P's presence, posture, and preparedness. I'm going to dig into these pretty deeply here in just a second, but but if we don't have yes, Lucille Ball, extra points still. If you get the uh, if you get the episode, if you know what episode this is from, it's one word episode. You might even be able to see it in there. Uh, I'll give you a little hint. Um, it's it's in there twice. It's in the picture twice. If you if you want to just uh, you know put on your your glasses and get in there real deep. Um, but presence just is a confident unfluttered presence that I feel comfortable being in front of the camera. The only way to do that is to practice being in front of the camera. And one of the best ways to practice again is just to video yourself all the time. When you have meetings on zoom or teams or Webex, don't look at yourself. Practice looking at your webcam as you talk to people 
That's a really difficult thing to do because we like to look at the people we're talking to, but from their vantage point, you're looking down. So if you want to look at the people you're talking to in those online meetings, look at your webcam. That's going to be great practice. It's going to help you get very comfortable looking at a tiny little round thing that's not natural for us to look at. But that's going to build some of that confidence, some of that presence. Your posture. You want to have a relaxed um, but upbeat posture. You want, to, you want to be confident. You want to be positive. You want to be enthusiastic. And you want to be still. You don't want to be dancing back and forth from foot to foot, shifting your weight, going back and forth, rocking back and forth, or bouncing up and down. You just kind of want to be there. And you want to have a, uh, yes, is the Vita Mita Vegemin. Vita Mita Vegemin uh, was, uh, was this episode. Yes, and the more, uh, the more Lucy took, the drunker she got, the better the video. Um, I think nowadays we can all agree that they would never have put the real Vitamita Vegemin in that bottle. Um, because whatever it was, it was good stuff. Um, but again, we, we just want to be, we just want to have a good, um, uh, even keel about ourselves and we want to be prepared, which means we're going to have a script. We're going to understand that script. Even if that script is just bullet points. You know, I'm working right now from three bullet points, presence, posture, preparedness. And yet I've done this enough times that I actually have the script in my head in terms of what I want to say about these three things. Preparedness also means that we have the right lighting. We have the right microphones. Our camera is the right distance from us, uh, that everything is clean. We don't have smudge marks on the camera and that we are just ready to do a video. We're not thinking about the car wreck we had on the way to work this morning. In fact, if you had a car wreck on the way to work and you're getting ready to shoot video, shoot video on another day. Because it's going to, again, everything that happens to us is going to show up on our face, just like Lucy. So how, again, do we look at on camera? We're going to have a shooting plan. Don't wing it. Don't ad lib. You can, you can throw in a, a word or two extra if you think it, it is important, but for the most part, it's better just to shoot those videos with the script. We're going to write down what we want to shoot and how we want to shoot it. Uh, again, extra points if you know who this actor is here in the in the photo who has the shirt that uh, looks just like the wallpaper. Uh, this is not how we want to do it, folks. But we want to uh, we want to make sure that we actually have a plan for what we're going to do so that we don't surprise ourselves. And I learned this the hard way because I would go outside and I would shoot some really quick videos, some endorsements for some of our clients, things like that. Uh, yes, Zach Bramp, Garden State. Uh, you're, you're killing it out there. Great, uh, great answers. Um, we... I thought that by shooting in the sunlight, just by taking this really... Quick video, maybe one or two minutes outside, natural light, everything was going to be great. Oh, I couldn't have been more wrong. We had background noises. We had chainsaws. We had shadows. We had wind noise. We had bees flying in our face. There was just all kinds of things that went wrong. So if you if you want a controlled environment, don't do it outside. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second again. I'm, I'm going to bring this up again because a lot of people think shooting outside is really cool. Well, maybe if you're shooting a movie, but not just a video. Watch what you eat and drink. Now, this is going to sound crazy, and I drink a lot of caffeine, and I love sugar. I like my tea. I'm, I'm Southern. I like my tea sweet enough. Uh, I like it thick enough to pour over pancakes. But here's the thing about caffeine and sugar. It jacks you up. It makes you jittery, and everything gets accentuated on camera. So try to cut back on your caffeine. Uh, try to avoid dairy. Dairy gives you cotton mouth, and instead of being able to talk, you're going to hack into the camera <laughs> all day. Not a good look. So try to avoid those things. Fruits and snacks with carbs are the best things. If you need some energy, but you need natural energy and you need to eat before you shoot or in the middle of the day, have something that, that has some natural carbs, some natural sugars. Dress comfortably, but do not do the Zach Bramp thing and look like the wallpaper, right? Uh, solid colors and backgrounds that contrast are best. 
Uh, even with the photo that you see in the top right-hand corner, it's a gray shirt with a black background. Wearing a black shirt is going to make me look like a, a, a headless, uh, well, a bodiless <laughs> head there. Uh, so try to have a little contrast and dress for your audience in the content type. If you are doing a very serious video, dress a little more seriously. But if it's a fun video, don't wear the, the button-down look. You know, uh, try to try to match your uh, match your content. Warm up your voice. Warm up your voice. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, before we before we go through the rest of this slide, let, let's talk about how to warm up your voice. Your your face is full of muscles. I'm 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 not telling you anything you don't know here, but your face is full of muscles, and a lot of us we just start talking and we don't really warm up, and sometimes. That can cause us to not enunciate words properly. It can cause us to trip over our tongue. A lot of things can happen if we don't warm up. So I'm going to give you, this is one of the reasons I wanted you to download these slides, folks. Here is a great tongue twister that a masterful video content creator gave me. And so here we go. Francis Fowler's father fried five floundering flounders for Francis Fowler's father's father. And you do that in a very exaggerated way, opening your mouth as far as you can when you say these things. The reason you're doing that is you're stretching out your neck and your face muscles, and it's going to make you more relaxed as you start to speak. And so um, er do this three to five times. Really get a feel for the words, get a feel for the sounds coming out of your mouth. And it's it's going to give you a different tone. It's going to give you a different feel as you start doing your video. Okay. It's going to help you pronounce those words. It's going to save you time on reshooting because you're going to trip, again, over your tongue less. Smile. Smile. The, the dirty little secret about video is, again, video accentuates everything. A pleasant look is going to be more inviting. People want to watch somebody who is happy. But even if you just have a non-smile, you're not frowning, it's going to look like a frown on video. And people will engage with happy people. People will volunteer for happy people. They will, they will subscribe to happy people. They will want to watch your next video if you're happy. Always have a home base for your hands. Don't be like Ricky Bobby over here. Don't know what to do with your hands, right? This is one of my this is one of my favorite things. I don't know what to do with my hands. And sometimes we, when we're having meetings, I'll I'll be sitting around looking at somebody and I'll say, "Do you not know what to do with your hands?" And so we have this Ricky Bobby thing in the office. Um, your hands need to have a home base, and so because you can't see video from me, uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just and I want you to do this with me. I want you to kind of sit up straight or stand up straight. I want you to bring your elbows in and touch your rib cage. Just bring your elbows in as far as you can toward your rib cage. And, and you've got your Ricky Bobby hands kind of up, right? And, and so now I want you to bring your fingertips together right above your belly button. Just put your fingertips together. You've probably seen politicians do this. You've probably seen news anchors do this. If you put your fingertips together, this is an authoritative stance. This is what we would call home base for your hands. You can use your hands to make a gesture. You can point in the air. You can shake your fist. You can point at something else. You can, you can use all kinds of hand gestures, but then you bring your hands right back to your home base. And on your video, it's more authoritative. It doesn't look like you're Ricky Bobby and just don't know what to do with your hands. So practice that again as, as you're practicing talking on if you're if you're on a webinar if you're on a an online meeting as you're talking to people keep your fingertips together right about in front of your belly button and use your hands to make gestures but always practice coming right back to home base your your fingers can always find your fingers and this way you don't do crazy things with your hands So where do we look? We look at the camera, unless it's an interview. If you're doing an interview with someone, look at the person you're talking to. 
you've probably seen people, these man on the street interviews where they're talking to somebody and the person's just looking straight into the camera <laughs> and it's a little awkward. So always look at the other person if it's an interview, but otherwise you're going to look right to the camera. Try shooting in bursts. You can always piece things together. Don't worry about looking down at your, at your paper or your teleprompter, your notes, whatever. If you shoot in short bursts, you're going to, you're going to feel more confident because you're going to have 30 seconds of really good content rather than a minute of things that you've messed up. And now you have to reshoot. You can build a teleprompter. I've built a teleprompter out of a couple of metal clamps, a black cloth, and a um, picture frame that I picked up at Walmart for about three bucks. And I think the whole thing cost less than $12 to build. It was a challenge, not going to lie, but it works. I would highly recommend that you look at buying one off of Amazon. They're not expensive these days. In fact, when we get around to our tools, I'm going to tell you about one where you won't even have to use a teleprompter at all. It's built right into your phone. If you mess up, uh, don't, you know, don't smack yourself in the side of the head and say, oh, I can't believe I messed up. I did that. If you, if you fumbled your words, just finish the sentence anyway. Start again from the last sentence. This way, you, you're a little more easy going about it. You are not, um, you're not as tense. You, when you start to focus on, on a, a, a verbal stumble, it stops you. And it, uh, it makes you uh, uncomfortable. It makes you think, well, wait a minute, maybe, maybe I can't do this. Keep moving. Just keep moving. If you do stumble, either clap or wave your hands like you're trying to flag down an airplane. <laughs> uh, you know, you're on a deserted island. You're trying to flag down an airplane. If you wave your hands a couple of times, this is a visual cue that, oh, there's an edit point. I messed up. So as you're scrolling through your video, you say, oh, well, I messed up this. I, I have to go back and fix that. It's a, it's a placeholder that will help you figure out where you need to be. Try to have consistent video formatting. If you're always talking behind a desk with a microphone and a bookcase in the background, hey, that's great. Keep that. That becomes your consistent look. People trust that. They know that this is your video. They know they can trust you. This is always your background. Try to establish a rhythm. Don't talk real fast in one part of the video and then you slow down in another. But try to keep an even tempo. Your format is just a skeleton, but follow it every time. You can have a format where you're going to do like an introduction. You're going to do the body content. You're going to do a summary. You can do the wrap up and your end card. Whatever that looks like, do it every single time. Lighting is something that you can control if you're inside. So let's have good lighting. Now, I've got two options here for you. The bottom right corner is just a screenshot of something that you can get on Amazon. You could get all of these lights, and it comes with instructions on how to use them, and they're great. I think at Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or wherever you are, you can get one of these little shop lights and, and put an LED bulb in it for for less than 15 bucks. So don't be afraid to use just these little clamp lights if you put them in the right place and you have the right light. An LED light with a warm white uh, or, a, or a bright white, either one of those is going to work fine. Put one directly in front of you, one off to a 45 degree angle, and maybe one right over your head. For three of those, you've got an entire studio. That's all you need. You can use neutral colored bed sheets as your background. You don't have to have a fancy backdrop. If you do insist on shooting outdoors, I said we'd come back to this because, man, this one, this one threw me for a loop a time or two. Yes, it is free lighting and it's free background, but you also get free background noise. You get free insects. You get free teenagers and diesel pickup trucks running up and down the road. Uh, you get free tractors and all kinds of things. It is more difficult to control. So just understand that there may be some things you need to edit out. So I'm going to put something in the chat over here that I did not include. But if you go to Authonic, 
This is a free website. If you have video where you have some unintended background noise that you just need to take out, maybe it's birds chirping, maybe it's a bee buzzing, maybe somebody came out of the office and said, hey, hey, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were video. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll be quiet. I didn't realize you are video. Hey, dude, I'm still videoing. All right, you can run your video file through Auphonic, just upload it to Auphonic, run it through, takes about 10 minutes. That video file will come back and all of that background noise will be gone. It just edits it right out. It's a thing of beauty. Um, so yeah, editing out background noise is nothing like it used to be. So let's spend the last few minutes we've got talking about some awesome, awesome tools. And I'm going to go ahead and invite you now. If you've got any questions at this point, we've got about 15 minutes left. Please drop those questions into the chat and we'll make sure we get to those. But I want to talk to you about some of my favorite video tech. This is going to make you look great. If you already use Zoom, uh, you could probably do this on Microsoft Teams, but I'm not as crazy about Microsoft Teams in terms of sound quality. If you just need to do a talking head video, Zoom is great. You can create a Zoom background, you can create a plain background, or just a, you know, I would not do this against a window. If you if you have a window, an open window as a background, that's going to make you look like a silhouette. Uh, you'll see a bright, shiny background and a little black silhouette of you, and there's no detail on your face. So I don't recommend that, but Zoom and a background, this is really all you need. You can have an, a, a complete studio, and you can record yourself doing videos. And you can use the free version of Zoom. You don't have to pay for Zoom to do this. If you need to edit videos, uh, you you may, if you have an iPhone, you already have iMovie built into your phone. You can edit videos. You can, you can do some amazing things. Now, when I talk about editing, I'm not talking about putting in CGI and, you know, dropping, uh, you know, a, a Godzilla in the background and maybe having a robot come up and talk to you. No, we're, we're, what I'm talking about in iMovie and, and editing movies is we're going to talk about clipping. I'm going to clip the front of the video where I wasn't really doing anything, anything before I started talking. I'm going to clip the end of the video where I wasn't talking anymore. Maybe I'm going to clip out a segment where I had to stop and pick my nose. There's something in here that I'm going to clip out, and it's really very simple. You just you, you put a line here, you put a line there, you make that disappear, and the, and the video comes right together. So iMovie is fantastic, but so is Windows Movie Maker. If you have a computer with Windows on it, you probably have Movie Maker built in. If you want the really cool, high-powered, you know, big horsepower version of Windows Movie Maker, it's about 36 bucks a year to add that to your Windows. So if you're not a if you're not an Apple person, if you're a PC person, Windows Movie Maker does a great job. Now, what you can also do with iMovie Movie Maker. And we movie, we movie is just an, an online version that you can download and you can subscribe to we movie. But when you when you have these, it also gives you a, the ability to to add graphics into that quadrant, that top quadrant that I showed you in the very first slide. You can add videos in there. You can add still pictures in there. You can add your logo. You can add graphics. You can add the lower third, that stripe across the bottom. And you can do this, but once you've done it, it's there, and you can drop it into every movie. And yeah, it takes a while. Give yourself a weekend with nothing else on your plate. Play around with some video editing software. By Monday, you're going to feel like a pro. This stuff is not hard to use. Folks, if I can use it, anybody can use it. I promise. One of the things I'm going to caution you against is do not go out and grab photos, videos, or graphics off of Google and drop them into your video. Don't grab music off the internet and drop it into your video. Taylor Swift does not like that. Bruce Springsteen does not like that. Do not grab somebody else's content and put it into yours. Well, if you need a video, if you need an intro, let's say you need music, you want to have music, intro and outro music. 
Let's say you need some stock photos. Let's say you need some stock video, just a little video clip of the sky. Do you want to sit outside and wait for that perfect cloud to come across? Or would you like to have just a video of that perfect cloud that someone has already taken? You can go to Storyblocks. This is a subscription. This is going to cost you some money. I'm going to give you some other ways of doing this. But Storyblocks is going to give you video clips. It's going to give you uh, stock photos and stock videos that you can use. for you. Well, you don't have to pay per video or per clip. And it's going to give you music. You can, you can load clips of music. You can load background music. You can load that ominous da, 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 music or whatever, cinematic music. It's all built into that subscription. So you've got the tools that you need, and it's completely on the level. It's not going to get you busted by the YouTube cops. Or it's not going to get your video taken down by Facebook. So we were watching, my wife and I were watching a live stream church service video. And uh, it was not, a, it was a church in a different town. We were watching this video and about 85 or 90% of the way through, they were almost done. They put up a video of a mission trip that they're getting ready to take. And they played a Michael Jackson clip behind the video and the video stopped. So if you want a really quick way to get your videos taken down, get your channel blown up and, and, and removed, use other people's content. If you don't want to do that, use a service like Storyblocks. TubeBuddy is a plugin that you can use. It's a browser add-on. It is, uh, they do have a free intro version that you can use. And I, have, I highly recommend, go ahead and load the free version of TubeBuddy. Use it. And if you do it right, you won't need to pay for it ever again. You can just let your subscription lapse and not pay the paid version. Because here's what TubeBuddy does for you. TubeBuddy will help you find the best way to word your uh, your headlines, your titles. It will evaluate your thumbnail clips, your graphics, and your video. So if you if you have some videos and you load those up and you let TubeBuddy analyze those, TubeBuddy will tell you, oh, you got to change this. I'd fix that. Once you have that information and you make those changes, you can let TubeBuddy go. Now, there are people who pay for a lot of different things that TubeBuddy does, but that's the main thing you want TubeBuddy to do is let you know, if I post this video, is anybody going to watch it? That's all you need. Videos. Uh, the last time I checked, this was a $69 lifetime subscription. They don't do this all the time. They do have an annual subscription that's quite pricey. What I would do is do the free version of videos and let them send you the link for the special offer. It's a lifetime subscription. Videos will help you do really cool intros and outros and graphics and things. And once you've got it, once you pay for that lifetime version, you don't have to do it again. I'm going to circle around here to the right side of the video, uh, of the slide, and we're going to talk about Biteable. Biteable is one of my all-time favorite websites because Biteable will help you put together really quick animated videos, short explainer videos. Uh, you can have video clips. You can use graphics over the videos. If you want to do video without being on the screen, Biteable is the way to do that. If you go to sequoiafund.org, if you go to our website, and you look at some of the videos that are on our website, especially when, uh, on the lending pages, uh, you know, how to get a loan. What to, hey, those are biteable videos. They're really quick promo videos. They're very easy to use. Uh, and, and I do highly recommend them. Uh, another thing that we use to help us create videos where we don't actually have to be on screen is it's called uh, TechSmith. TechSmith. Uh, has a way to do screen capture videos. I'm going to put that down here in the chat. TechSmith and Camtasia. These are these are siblings. Um, TechSmith does a few things really well. Camtasia does a few other things really well. But basically, you can do screen share videos. You can walk people through a process on screen. You don't have to be on screen. They never have to see you. So I highly recommend looking into these. These are subscription, but 
Uh, thanks to uh, TechSoup. Some of you may be familiar with TechSoup. I'll put that in the in the chat as well. TechSoup is a place where nonprofits uh, can go to download video. Uh, to, I'm sorry, not to download video, but to download software at a steep discount and in some cases free. All you have to do if you are a 501c3 nonprofit, you prove that you're a nonprofit, send them the documentation, and they will sign you up. And they will, uh, in some cases, you can get a lot of a lot of software at no additional charge. So I highly recommend that. Uh, StreamYard is a great platform for interviewing people and shooting videos, and and uh, it allows you to live stream. It allows you to live stream over multiple platforms. We did a lot of live streaming during COVID. Live streams through social media are a fantastic way to build video viewership. Last but certainly not least, I want to talk about Live Pigeon because you can't always live stream. Yes, live stream is great. People love, I mean, people, I would do, I would do a 30 second test live stream at 1130 on a Saturday night. Thinking nobody, everybody's watching Saturday Night Live. Nobody's watching me. Nobody's, and as soon as I logged in to do this little test video where I'm sitting there in a t-shirt, I've got 30 people watching. I mean, how crazy is that? But live pigeon. So if you if you take a video and you load it to run at a specific time, say Thursday at 3 p.m., if you load that to one of the social channels or all the social channels, they're going to see that as a video that has just been loaded, that you've picked a time and you want it to show. And your engagement's going to be pretty low. If you first feed that video into Live Pigeon and then you broadcast it at three o'clock on Thursday, it feeds it directly and in real time to those platforms. So they believe it's live streamed. It gives you the ability to live stream when you're doing something else. This is huge for video engagement. Um, I'm a big believer in that. That is about $300 a year. StreamYard is about $300 a year. Biteable is about $300 a year. You put all these things together, it's very powerful. Still less than a thousand bucks. You may not need them. And I'm going to say right now, when you're getting started, don't bother with these things. Just get started. Just start making videos. And the faster you start, the quicker you're going to get comfortable with it, the better you're going to be and the more effective you'll be when you actually go live with your videos. Folks, you could have spent the last hour and a half doing almost anything, and I am honored that you would spend this time with me. The deal that I make with the Native Learning Center is that you always have my contact information here. You can reach out to me if you have a question about doing videos. Uh, please give me a shout. I'd love to walk through some things with you and help you out. Uh, learn from my mistakes. Learn from all the, the, the time that I've wasted doing it and maybe you won't have to. At this point, I'm going to turn this back over to Brooke. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for another incredible webinar, Russ. Um, I'm going to go ahead and launch today's feedback survey for everybody. If y'all could take a minute to complete that for us, um, it helps us to know what's working, what we can improve upon in the future, and they are anonymous, so feel free to be as candid as you would like. We hope you can join us for our next webinar that's going to be happening um, this Thursday. That's going to be on developing an internal HR audit by Lisa I. Perez. Registration's free as always. And feel free to access this as well as, of our, as well as any of our other recorded webinars online. You can find them on our website, nativelearningcenter.com. We have a Cathedral Webinars tab with a recorded webinar section. And you can click on any of the webinars that we've done for about the past two years. Um, so feel free to view those, share them with your colleagues, share them with your friends. Please also check out our upcoming events posted to our various social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We have an in-house produced podcast titled The Hope of Thing and Native American Podcast. You can listen to that on Simplecast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, as well as viewing the video recordings with our guests on our YouTube channel. All right, folks, once again, I want to thank everybody who joined us today. Thank you, Russ, for another incredible webinar. And I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of the day. We hope to connect with you really soon.
Thank you, Brooke. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. Looks like someone's typing. Oh, getting some love in the chat, Russ. I'll All always right. take that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and close out. I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day. Take care. Take care.